Welcome to the Business Information Buffet Podcast brought to you by the Minority Business Development Agency. Each week, we'll be featuring business owners and entrepreneurs that will provide their personal recipe for business, powerful conversations, and knowledge of the business world. We amplify the stories of various backgrounds, cultures, and expertise. Our self-identity is as diverse as our social community. We cultivate a community of like-minded individuals that share their different perspectives, broadening our worldview. Are you ready? This is the Bib Podcast, where everybody eats. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bid Podcast, where everybody eats here for another, another phenomenal, sensational episode. I am your host, Sean Torrey, with our DJ, DJ Ice Break. You go, boy. Yes, sir. Today, our topic for today is called From Entrepreneur to Serving the City, with a special guest who's real familiar with the city of Las Vegas, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, every guest we have that appears on this show is special. But please know that. But this guest today is special, 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 special. Okay? When I met this gentleman, he was our beloved Nevada System of Higher Education Board of Regent. He's a born and raised here in the historic west side of Las Vegas. He's a husband. He's a father of two beautiful queens. He's a former marketing director for Station Casinos. He's a business owner. He's a city elected official. He's multiple committee members across the city. He is a member of the oldest, the coldest, the boldest but of all black Greeks, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Crib Magnum, our city of Las Vegas councilman for War 5, Cedric Creer. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Come on now. Brother Tori, that was a hell of a uh, introduction, my friend. Come on now. You know I had to do it right. How I you see doing? that. Very, very kind of you to say those kind words, man. And it's great to be here. What a fantastic uh, really venue you guys have built here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, some time. It, it's, it is, it's first class, you know. Not that I would expect anything less. Let me, let me come on. I'm a man of Alpha by <laughs> Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. You know, when you put on that black and old gold. Yes, sir. You got to live up to those uh, no, to those standards. That's right. So I hear you. Come right or come correct. We don't come, or don't come at all. That's how we move. No doubt about it. And it's just, thank you for being here because it's, it's been a long time, like just growing and learning from you. It, I've, I've, no, I've met uh, councilman career, center career, brother career. I met him like when I was in college yeah. and he was a board of the region. I used to see his picture on the wall. Then I graduated. I gave the commencement speech at black graduation yeah. and amongst you and the other board of region members, you guys made it impre- like a very good impact on me. Like I, it was just crazy to see you all right there. Yeah. And I'm just giving that speech and wishing me off well for life. And yeah. I had no clue what was going to come. And now we're here like officially Eight years later. Yeah. Well, you know, look, eight years later, here you are, you know, beautiful family and a uh, man that is didn't just take that bachelor's degree, went on and got your master's degree, working sir. on your Ph.D. Yes, sir. Um, a very, very, very dedicated public servant to the community. Thank you. And, uh, you know, people looking up to you. Thank you. Right. It means and a lot. Uh, we we. It's great to see your growth. Thank you. And I think that when you look at your growth, you look at the. The growth of others and those that are around you that mentored you yeah. that I know of, yes. you know, um, especially with the mentoring group that the Alphas have, yes. with Alpha Men and Divas of Tomorrow. Yes, sir. And who you were was a young man that was a participant mm-hmm. in what we call AMDOT and with our brother Capers and uh, brother Gale K yep. and, you know, others, brother Davis, brother Davis that mentored mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And then you come full circle. And then on behalf of the uh, Theta Pi Lambda Foundation, you were running AMDOT again. Yep, I was. So, I mean, my goodness. Yeah. You don't get more full circle than that, right? I, I, I didn't think about that recently. As, actually, I thought about that recently because I was like, man, like, that, I was with the youth group since I was 15 years old. Right. And then as of 2019, like August 2019, I stepped away because it was just time for me to grow. <laughs> Uh, I got to the point where it was like it, things were great, mm-hmm. but um, it was time for me to grow and, and do more. And so I ended up, you know, being here at CSN. I'm working with the formerly known as Bump Up, but now the right. ENI Black Male Movement Program. And I'm doing other things, King of Jewels still. Mm-hmm. And I still work with MDOT whenever they need me. But it, it's a, MDOT really was the gateway to everything right. that happened for me. Right. Um, you, you, you know, and I tell you, um, 
I always say there's not enough room in my brain mm-hmm. to take on more things. Sometimes you do have to step, take a step back in order you to, in order for you to take three, four steps forward. Right. And uh, as much as you are giving back to the community, sometimes you do have to say, okay, I have to look after me right now. This is my time to do what I need to do. Right. Because you can't help anybody if you are not yeah. in the right frame and in the right space. Um, and sometimes people don't realize that. You know, yeah. I always say, you know, you don't have to do four or five things mediocre. Do mm-hmm. one thing great. Yes. Be a perfectionist at that. And then you can start branching off and doing other things. But you're no good to anybody if you are not in a position to help. And your heart's always in the right spot. Mm-hmm. You will always give and you always give back. But there are take some time for yourself. And you got to do what you got to do mm-hmm. in order to grow even further to help more people. And, and that's why when I, I remember just learning about you and we've got we've had many conversations over the years and what you've done from running against our frat brother, mm-hmm. uh, Congressman Horsford, running against him back in the day for political race, then becoming a border regent, leaving the station casino, starting career magnum, right. be, being an entrepreneur. It's just like, honestly, the epitome of what alpha men do. Well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> thanks. You know, I got to tell you, uh, it doesn't come easy. Right. I've been blessed to have a, a wonderful support system, uh, especially with my wife, who will be celebrating 27 years of marriage, August the 13th. Yes, I'm talking about yeah, that you know, been together for 34 years. And, you know, I couldn't do anything that I do if it wasn't for her standing with me. And I wouldn't say behind me, but standing with me side by side. And sometimes, many times I'm following her. And, you know, it. God has a plan. Mm-hmm. And one of the challenges, the hardest thing to do is to follow that path that God has for you. Right. You got to take that leap of faith. And I've been fortunate that I've taken a few leaps of faith. Um, and like everybody, uh, I've found uh, that it doesn't always come easy. And I've, I've lost. I end up losing to, you know, Congressman Horsford, which mm-hmm. is great. But I still wanted to try to find a way to serve my community and sort of ran for the Board of Regents. And, you know, I always take a look at it like this. Um, I'd rather get a mitt, get in the game and strike out than to never get a mitt and get in the game. Right. At least I'm, I'm trying. Right. And, you know, I don't want to look back at my life and say, man, I should have done this. Or have done I could have done that. Yeah. You know, um, there's there's no shame in failing. Because most successful people in our society have failed multiple, multiple times. Mm -hmm. And then if only by the act of God and hard work and keep rolling up your sleeves and persistence that you're able to find success in some way, shape or form. And success is built off of a different model. It's not one size fits all of what success is, right? Um, Success, is it making a million dollars? Is that successful to you? Or is it saying, hey, you know what? Um, my daughter just graduated from Howard mm. right, in May, right? And she is working, moved to New York, and she's working, and she's a wonderful young lady, right? right? That's the epitome of success. My youngest daughter is going into her senior year, who is amazing, mm. who is just smart as a tick and is going to do great things. That's success to That's me. to you. Being married for 27 years, That's success man. to me. Listen, listen. <laughs> You know what I mean? Many can't do it. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it, well, you know what happens too in life is that you know, the person you marry today is not the same person five that years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Mm-hmm. I only think by the by really the grace of God if you're able to grow together. Grow together but I right. understand. I, I can get it, right? It's not the same person. Right. And I, I think, you know, something that, because I've been married once mm-hmm. before and uh, going into that first marriage, um, I can tell you, I look at marriage completely different. Of course we, you do. We didn't work out, uh, but you know, we, we co-parent well together mm-hmm. uh, and I'm engaged. Uh, and like God's grace, I am engaged again. And my fiance, she was married before too. Yep. But the way we approached our relationship really taught us like, okay, there's certain things we need to talk about. We need like, not just our, our relationship is great, but finances, how, what are we of looking course. for? How are we going to move? Because what made us fall in love at the beginning is not going to sustain. It's probably not going to sustain through our lifetime. Right. So you have to always continually find the possibilities and the growth. Yeah, there is a growth and there's, and there's mutual growth. There's, Mm -hmm. there's a give and there's a take, right? Right. Maybe you like to go out and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, hang out late and she likes to go home and, you know, sit around and read a book. And that's her idea of, of a, of a great weekend. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you find yourself staying home a little more, right? Then she might find herself going out a little more. Exactly. Right. So you meet that happy medium and then have an understanding that says, well, look, I'm not going out. I'm not going to make you feel bad for going out because mm-hmm. I don't want to. I want and to. I'm not going to feel bad for you staying home because you want to. Mm-hmm. Mutual level of respect. And I think because th- those are the kind of type of conversations, if you kind of look at it, mirror into some how we approach businesses oh, at yeah, times sure. too. 
So like thinking everything's a life lesson. I'm like, man, <laughs> so I, I think then the COVID nineteen really made me sit down mm-hmm. and just appreciate what's there. Yeah, because I'm so used to being at every community event or, yep. or I'm, I'm working with some youth. Um, even for Jasmine, Jasmine, my fiance, she owns a volleyball club. So we're both honestly the same in different capacities, right. just in completely different lanes. Yep. And uh, and I wanted to ask you, so when it came to starting your businesses and uh, owning different businesses, what how did how did those conversations go? Like, how did you grow into this person who can now operate and look up, look after the city? Yeah, well, you know, I was I've been around some people who are entrepreneurs, you know, we're mm-hmm. all most of us are products of our environment. And um, I had been working for mm-hmm. stage casinos for 10 years. You know, I, when I graduated, a buddy of mine had a tour travel company and uh, I worked for him when I got out of school and um, and then he grew that business. He ended up getting bought out by, we had both worked in that business. So we had both worked in this business in high school. Right. Uh, answering for telephones, making hotel reservations. And um, he took it upon himself while he was at USC to start, start his own business on a small little room, much half the size of this, and started answering phones and booking hotel rooms. He built that business up to, um, uh, up to being a, a, a very reputable business. I worked for him. Internet came along. Mm-hmm. He started selling rooms around the world. Mm-hmm. He gets bought out by Expedia. And, you know, one thing leads to another. So you see that and you say to yourself, hmm, okay, well, well, he did that. Mm-hmm. And that was one of my closest friends. We met in ninth grade. He did that. Okay, cool. Then I had another person who was doing it. I have a brother that manages music artists, right? right? Music started working, managing music producers. And here's a guy from Las Vegas is in LA. He's trying to manage business. Like he didn't, it wasn't a nine to five gig. Right. He's hustling to try to build up his business. And next, you know, he built it up where he's managing Janet Jackson, the Backstreet Boys, uh, Cisco, Drew Hill, 112, Kim, Tony Braxton, Tony Braxton, you know, all these, all these folk. So you see that right. and you go, well, hold on now. Hold on. He, he did it. Right. And so I said, after 10 years of working with stations, and I worked with stations, and it was great. And I started out dealing blackjack on Graveyard. Wow. I worked in the um, slot department. I sold change. Wow. I worked in, um, you know, I had a little wow. uniform with my bow tie on it <laughs> with a change cart, uh, fixing slot hopper jams, paying out jackpots. Right. I worked in a racing sports book, writing tickets. I worked in a hotel, sales, food and beverage, and I went into marketing. Right. And as a marketing uh, person, I was worked in special events, advertising, casino marketing, player right. hosting. And I ended up becoming the director of marketing mm-hmm. for Palace Station, for Sunset Station, opened up two casinos in Missouri. Right. Um, and then I, when I came back from Missouri, I came back to Sunset Station when it had just opened up. And after 10 years of doing that, I said to myself, you know what, here I am, I'm overseeing marketing, advertising, public relations, special events, direct mail, um, the Players Club, mm-hmm. and developing all that. And I said, you know, I want to try to do this for myself. Right. And I left the company. And I went to be the chief marketing officer for a company for a little bit. And I left them. I ran for the state senate. I lost. lost. And so I was sort of in a crossroads. Even though when the legislature is on a full-time job, you have to have another job because they only pay you $120 a day when the legislature. I think that's what it is now still. And so I said, well, I can go back and try to find a job. I don't have a job now. Mm. Or I can go try to start my business. Got you. And I did it. And I started my business. Uh, we started Career Creative Group, and it was with another guy who was a creative um, artist. And we just went out on the road, started hustling, trying to find business. We'd go get a piece of business. We'd come back. We would do it, hand you a report or a logo or something like that. Right. The web, the internet wasn't really, internet wasn't really hot. People didn't really have a lot of websites back then in 2006. But then the recession hit. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had grown that business fairly good. And I always say that it's, you know, that, which is true, you know, five to eight years is when businesses decline and they don't quite make it new businesses. And we were right around there. And then the recession, first recession hit. And we had grown, we had gotten some clients. And the recession hit somehow, some way. I don't know how we did it. We stayed open. Right. And we found a way to at least make our minimum payroll. But keep in mind, I didn't make any money. Right. You know, when you own the business that's, you know, everybody else is getting paid, yeah. but I'm not getting paid. Like right. zero, nothing. Every 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 if I made five dollars, five dollars went out. Right. And expenses and payroll and, 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 some, and lights, copier, 
<laughs> it adds up. That's like all, man, trust me. <laughs> what the amount of stuff, because you know, I own my clothing brand and I at the mm-hmm. show, like, I pay my videographer. Oh, yeah. I pay, I got to pay for the boxes, the te- mm-hmm. I, all this stuff that I pay for, and then pushing out, making sure everyone else gets their product. And so I understand why on the back end, people, they skyrocket those prices, especially well, if it's not something that's uh, depreciated. When it's depreciated value, it's not something that's. Yeah. Well, money. you know, also, you look, prices are based off what someone's going to pay for. Pay for it. It. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you want to charge $1,000 for a cheeseburger? God bless you. If God there's somebody <laughs> going to pay for it, then you know what? <laughs> You must have priced it right. Right. But if nobody buys it, then you say, well, maybe I'm going to drop this down to 900. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and see what happens. But it's all that. So it's all demand that's there. And and so you work through that. And if there's any dollars left at the end of the month or at the end of the year or whatever, if you can take a draw or take something from it, then there you go as a, as a business owner. And so in 2012... Um, coming out of the recession, I merged my company, right? Mm, so I had two why. choices. I can either go back and get another loan and try to make another reinvestment into the company and try to grow it or I could try to merge it. And I merged it with a company called Magnum Integrated mm. Marketing, which is a much larger firm right. than I had. Um, had offices in Philadelphia and offices in Vegas and I merged with them to become Crim Magnum. Now we're Magnum Integrated Marketing. We just, we just say we're Magnum. Um, gotcha. And so, you know, we do marketing and advertising, creative design, uh, web design, right. uh, media, media production. And it's, you know, look, it's not been easy. Most businesses don't go through two major recessions mm-hmm. like we have, like my business has gone through. Yeah. Usually you go through one and you're like, oh my God, we made it, it's all good. And we've gone through two, the 2008, 2009 one. Now this past now year, this past year yeah. and, and you know, our business went, if people called up like a lot of businesses. That's one of the difference between me being an elected official too, is that people called me up and said, thanks a lot. It was, it was, it was fun. Right. We had a good run, but now it's over with. And so our business struggled just like everybody else's business right. who struggled, who, who was shut down. Um, you know, one of the things that um, I, I have too, is that sort of diversify. I don't have all my eggs in one basket. Right. That's right. And well, it is, but it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, yeah, and so, too. and so I've got sort of multiple, they have a billboard company, yes. you know, in 2010, um, an opportunity came up and we partnered with a company called Connell Outdoor Advertising too. And we won the bid with the county and the airport right. in order to manage their 40 billboards they have on their lane, on their property. Right. I have nine of those boards that we manage. And so, you know, now we have a billboard business, career right. outdoor advertising. And the, and the thing about that is, <laughs> it's funny, uh, people think that you put a billboard up and everybody's just going to be calling you up, telling yeah. you, hey, I just can't wait to give you all my money to put my message up on that billboard. Right. And that's not the case. It's a very tough business. Um, and there's a lot of competition. Mm-hmm. A lot of the big boys, the Lamars, the Killer Channels, the CBSs out there that have hundreds of billboards in the marketplace. And so you're trying to get people to advertise on your, on your billboards. That's tough. We had built up from the first recession, built back up out of that. Mm. And I came on that business right on the tail end of the first recession. Wow. And so here you have us trying to now go back out. Right. Get people on it. And uh, we were building it back up. This comes along. Mm. We had a nightlife quarter. We had Tao on our boards. We had win, win, win on a couple of boards. We had some other things. That business right. stopped the minute the yeah, economy it, closed it, down. It, it, it off yeah, for, yeah, no um, one's yeah, yeah, no one's marketing nightlife yes. if there's no nightlife. Uh, that's <laughs> right. True. There's no one's switching out DJs if there's no <laughs> DJs. There's no he, club. He, he yeah, you know a, what I'm saying? He was billboard on yeah. there for a while. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> DJ Icebreak's gonna be at so and so on Friday. Right. Well, if there's no Friday, then there's no need for you to put a billboard up for DJ Icebreak. Right. Up. So that business went just like Overnight, Dang. and so oh, all that—it's like the perfect storm that happens. And but you, you know, look, I, I've also been a firm believer in this. If somehow, some way, history has shown us—I don't know how you do it—but if a business can hold on and survive, then they usually reap the benefits on the back end the back after end. the recession coming back through. Right. Because uh, a lot of people can't withstand it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And advertising and marketing is one of those things that uh, many people, which I think is the wrong thing to do, mm-hmm. is one of the first things they cut. When you look at a budget, you look at a P&L and they say, OK, how can we cut X amount of percentage out of our dollars because business is soft? Um, advertising and marketing is where they usually go. Where they go first. first. Gotcha. When in essence, also those businesses that continue to try to push through 
keep their name going, keep their name in the marketplace, keep their name going, keep their name in the marketplace and keep promoting their business and keep promoting their brand. Right. They're the first people that we go visit when we come back to normality. Right. You can look, I mean, you can just see some of the businesses and, and that, that you patronize. Right. And you go, okay, they were still around. Oh, they're still open. Okay, let's go over here. Man. You, know, there's you and some... Jazzy want to go to dinner tonight. Where do you want to go? Exactly. Oh, I know so-and-so's. I just saw something for them. Let me go over there and check it out. It's top of mind. See, and that's, that's one of the things that I was, t- I was telling somebody. I was like, I'd rather, for me personally, I'd rather on the back end, like, okay, I'm not going to come out with this amount of product this time. Mm-hmm. I'll come out with a little bit, but I'm going to keep my marketing. Keep it going. I'm yeah. going to keep that marketing because I, I need everyone to see it across the face. It's true. It's know? true because you could look. It's expensive to uh, to go after clients, to yes. acquire clients. It's hard to maintain clients, but mm-hmm. it's more expensive to try to get new clients. And so if you can have someone who can hold on and you can still keep on top of mind awareness for them that you're still there, you're still you know, rocking and rolling, you're still putting out your product in some way, shape or form. Right. Then when everything comes back, they'll be very loyal to you and what you're doing. And I, see, this is starting off to be a great conversation because I want to actually lead this conversation into our first segment. Are you ready for our first segment? Sure. So we're going to go ahead and get into the recipe versus the outcome. And so in this segment, we discuss your journey, how you planned the business, what challenges you faced, and how you were able to overcome it and the outcome of those, right? And so we kind of briefly talked about that already. But the question that I have for you, good sir, is can you think of a time that you planned something and it didn't go accordingly? How did you make it work? <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> it happens all the time. Uh, you know, look, we've... Usually nothing goes as according to plan. Right. You have to be in a position to be flexible and nimble enough to to deviate, to adjust and um, to to overcome whatever obstacles are thrown at you. Right. right. Whether it's a community event that we're doing, um, whether it's a client that says, um, you know, hey, our business is soft the first two weeks. And, you know, I know we had plans to do this major campaign. We're going to go out with a TV, radio, print, digital, et cetera. Uh, business is soft. Uh, we don't. We can't do it. And how do you help that client now still get their message out in order to help them generate revenue, so that you can continue to work with them? Right. That happens often. Um, you know, it. It. <laughs> we've had it on the on the other end where you get great clients that have you know that have solid budgets, right. and you implement beautiful campaigns and it works according to plan. But lots of times it doesn't and you have to make adjustments along the way. Right. And, you know, and if you have a retail business that is promoting some type of um, uh, call to action and, you know, sometimes that call to action, I don't know what it could be. Let's say you do have a restaurant, you have a you know, nine ninety nine steak business mm-hmm. and uh, it's not moving. No one's buying steaks. Right. And you're marketing to a bunch of. Pescatarian, Pescatarian. <laughs> <laughs> right? You might have to switch that up a little bit. Right, right. And so it's all a matter of, uh, of, 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 of really being in a position nimble enough to make adjustments in life. And that goes with everything that you do. Right. It's all life lessons. It's all life lessons. It's all see, life lessons. See, and that's something that I think, um, oftentimes people don't give themselves grace when it comes to life lessons. Like mm-hmm. they feel like that as soon as something happens, it doesn't go according to plan. And they're like, Oh, it's failed. It's like, nah, just take that as a lesson. Yeah. And okay. Now, you know, better. That's how you grow. A lot of people are not willing to take that. They look at it as like winning and losing is essentially the same. It's yeah. just about one you prefer more. Yeah. I think that you should, you should still be hungry. You should still be willing to learn both ways, but that's just the thought. I have yeah. Y- and it, and it happens, you know, um, you know, another good analogy is you see these professional golfers, you know, when I, mm, I, I golf, right? golf, right? Yeah, yeah. I, say I golf, right? And I, and I hit a bad shot. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, how'd I get out of this shot? But you know, the pros hit bad shots too. Yeah. But you know what they do? They get out of trouble. They get out of trouble. They get up and they get down and they hit, you know, they hit it in the rough. Great. They hit it in a the trap. They get up and they get down. And so yeah. you got to figure out how do you make that adjustment? It's the guy walks over there, the guy or girl walks over to the ball and they say, home. Oh, okay, I guess I have to do this now. I mm-hmm. was going to hit a, you know, a three iron. Now I'm going to hit an eight iron. I'm going to chip it out back of the green. I'm going to put it up and I'm going to, you know, Put. I'm gonna walk out of here with par. I need Boom. To do better. Just I move on. Move on. See, you I, know need, what I, mean? I need to get. I need to get on golf. I and, <laughs> and I move on. Because you know what? The next hole is a completely different, a different, different challenge. Challenge, right? Right. So yeah. you're gonna dwell on the last hole. You, it, there's no time, man. Right. right. You can reflect on what you did wrong. You can make an adjustment between the time you get from the uh, from the from from one hole to the next. Right. Make an adjustment, and then you move forward with a new initiative. 
and that's you know it's life and so you you can either be stuck in the way things are and dwell on it or you can learn from them and try to move forward with it i could tell you my goodness you know uh, i've made a lot of mistakes right we all have mm -hmm. right um, and you know, for example, we talked about the first race that I ran for public office right. was in 2004 against Congressman Horsford. I lost. Yeah. So you sit back and you say, okay, well, I lost. Man, okay, that that sucked, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And you dwell on it. Are you going to say, okay, how do I continue to serve my community? Right. How do I find a way to really give back to I know what I have inside of me and what I want to give? Right. How do I continue to do that? Instead of sitting back saying, well, you know, that didn't work out. So, oh, well. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Right. Just get, I learned from it. Up. Yeah, you learned from it. Yeah, I learned from it. And to see, because even now, you, you're to the point where you're about, you're running for mayor. Yeah, so, I am. So I am. Salute I to am. you well, for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, but the thing is, 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 is I am in a position to run for mayor. Yeah. Okay. There's not just running for mayor. I'm in a position to win. To I am win. going to That's win. Right. I don't care who gets in the race. I believe that I am the best candidate and the most prepared person to be the next mayor of the city of Las Vegas. That right? Talk that talk. <laughs> That's in the clear. Talk that talk. Look, if people say who else is running, it makes no difference because I'm here. Yes, right? Right. Born and raised in the city of Las Vegas. Uh, I'll be the first native born mayor, obviously the first African-American mayor. Right. Small business owner. Uh, Would have had uh, almost 12 years on the Board of Regents. So I've worked in public office right. before. Two years on the Las Vegas Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. It'll be six and a half years as a city councilman. Right. Uh, we've accomplished so much in, in a very short period of time of me being the council person for Ward 5. Imagine what I can do you know, as a mayor for the city of Las Vegas. Right. But see, but the key is that I'm prepared. Right. I am in a position to run. Yeah. I am in a position to win. Sometimes we don't always find ourselves in the right position. Right. And, the, and, and being prepared to take on the next challenge. And so, uh, you know, this isn't just a fly-by-night type, well, I think, you know what, hey, I, th I think I'm gonna run for mayor. Hmm, that sounds cool. Very, I mean, very strategic, thought out, planned out, well, very invested, got you. You know what, I always say politics is timing, right? right? People say, so what's next? Like, I don't know, right? Um, what makes sense at right. that time, right? And if, if, if it's an open seat, if the person that's doing the job is not getting the job done for the community, is there opportunity there? Can I do a better job? Can I realistically do a better job? If I look at it, can I come in there and make a difference and effectuate a, a better outcome than the person that's in there now? Right. Right. It's not a matter of, well, I'm just going to go run for governor. I'm just going to go run for secretary of state. I'm going to run for Congress or Senate. Right. Why? Because yeah, I want to be a U.S. senator. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, I guess that sounds good over the dinner table. Right. But you're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, no, real talk. you can run. You can run if you want. Everybody. That's, that's a, we, look, man, we live in the greatest country in the entire world. Yeah. We can say what we want to about whomever we want to. Uh, and we have the ability to run for public office if you so fit. Right. And, uh, but there's, there's a matter of running just to say I ran. Mm hmm or there's a matter of running because so you feel you're the best candidate, you can really get it done, and you're gonna win. And you're gonna make impact. You're gonna make an impact. That's right. A positive impact. Thank you, there's a difference. Positive impact, yes. ladies and gentlemen. And so what what are some things you've experienced that could have worked out in theory, but did not go in practice? Hmm, well, you know, in theory, I should have made about $100 million <laughs> off of <laughs> selling a billboard, right? Yeah, billboard. Uh, yeah I mean, that was, that was the plan. <laughs> the plan was to, you know, go into the billboard business and, and sell them and, and, and be financially secure to provide for my family, but it doesn't always work like that. Right. Um, you know, going into public office and uh, serving, and I tell you that, I didn't, one thing that I didn't, uh, estimate was the amount of time mm -hmm. that you know people want to meet with the council person, and 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 it's and it's interesting because city government is where the rubber meets the road. Right. Many people do not have; they don't know who their legislators are, or who um, you know the governor is, or, or other you know, whomever. Right. But wherever you come from, you know who. A council person is in some way, shape, or form. Right. You're a councilman, you're an alderman in some cities, right? Um, and people know, and usually they're people that you know because you grew up with them. Like right. they live next to you, you see them, you see them at the supermarket, you see them at you know at, at Terrible's pumping their gas, right? 
And so people know that if they need something, mm-hmm. I'm just going to call my counsel's office. Right. And I call my office Grand Central Station because people call us for everything. Right. Kid got you know written up at school one day. Let me call the councilman and have him call over to uh, you know uh, Dr. Hada and you know, right. superintendent of schools and, right. and deal with it. Uh, I'm trying to get a patio extension. I'm trying to get my house. I'm trying to build Circa, a billion dollar casino in downtown. Right. Let me call the council person. Everything in between, you know, um, city government works on. And so I underestimated. I didn't. I didn't. You don't really know what you don't know. Yeah. And you don't really, it's, it's always more than what you think once you actually get in an office. And so the demand of the time has been something that in theory, I thought, you know, um, I don't know, why would somebody want to come talk to me, right? But lo and behold, it is the case. And you, I, see, you, see the, you see much more of the value in there. Oh, much more. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It. yeah. And it's funny, I always say nobody wants to meet with me, they want to meet with the councilman, right? right? So it's not like they're saying, hey, let me go meet with Cedric, he's a great, it's guy. A great guy. I it mean, sometimes like they do that, are. right? <laughs> <Which> <laughs> you and I do that, right? Hey, let's, yeah. get, let's get together, man. That's my, I'm my frat brother, let's get together, have a good time, great. Time, man. Most of the time, it's I want to go meet with the councilman, yeah. right? because the councilman has the ability to help effectuate the things that they are looking to get done, which right. is which is natural. Look, that's the job. Yeah. And um, so we make ourselves readily available. Um, we are, you know, do our best to meet the demands of uh, of our time. We are in the community right. a lot. We host, you know, community events the third Thursday of every month. We have a careers community conversation come out. You know, we're the only council person and really the only elected official that I've seen that every year we go out with what we call our Ward 5 forum. Right. And we go out to the community and we have all of our uh, department heads, metro, fire, safety, marshals, uh, parks and rec, operation, maintenance, uh, community services, all there. And we talk about all the things that we've done for the year. Good. The challenges. Where are we going? And then we have a dialogue with with the community. OK. We've done that for three years. And and and. I don't know anybody who's done that before. I don't. I don't either. Like ever. Yeah, I, I don't either. <laughs> Honestly, because being being an Amdot, I uh, was blessed with the I was blessed with the opportunity to see um, for, former former mentors who ran for office who put us in positions to learn and to meet other politicians who came into the city mm-hmm. and the ones who interact with the ones who do here in the city. And it, we, I, I've never seen that. I'm yeah. not gonna lie to you. And, I've, and I've been involved around in politics since I was 15. So yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. I mean, you see people do like, I you know, coffee, coffee with coffee, the council, council man, like, which, yeah. is, which is great. And we do that every third Thursday. Um, but not like a f- true form. Too and form, and yeah. I always say that I it also makes us accountable yeah. to our constituency group because, oh, you, they can come back and say, well, you know, last October you told us that you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. They remember. <laughs> they remember. I wrote it down right here. What happened? What happened? Right. And, and, and I don't know what might have happened, but at least they're going to hold us accountable. I have nobody holding us accountable, me accountable for the work that we do. Right. And I'm a pretty open book about where we're going, where what's happening, how the progress you're making, especially within the historic West Side with our 100 plan, our historic urban neighborhood redevelopment plan. You know, we had the plan and we had the plan in action, which is great. And and we're executing off of the plan. Right. It's not loosey goosey. It's right. not like, well, let's do this. You know, we're very good at doing one outs. Well, let's do that street. Let's add some trees over here. And it wasn't our comprehensive strategy. Because because there's some churches. Uh, um, I think in the war. Uh, I know in that area in, in particular, right? There's mm-hmm. there's a lot of churches. There. A lot of churches. Are there churches involved in? Of course. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, okay. without a doubt. You know, we're they're they're engaged. Um, they're engaged in the Hunter Plan and okay, in, the, in the formation. You know, we're looking to build a community farming facility at James Gate Park and oh, create man. a co-op. Hey, listen, hey, listen. <laughs> Alpha man, get it done. Like yeah, just, just you know. remember that. Just remember that. <laughs> you know, a co-op grocery facility, which we want the churches to come together and form a form a nonprofit to operate it and okay, run it. That's good, right? Because each one of the churches has a different food kitchen. Sometimes on Tuesdays, on Thursdays, uh, right. on, on yeah, Wednesday, right. you go here, you go there. Look, I want to eliminate that and make it easy for everybody. Let's have one centralized spot. You can come seven days a week. You can you can get the produce. You can get what we're growing. And uh, receive mm-hmm. services seven days a week oh. between the hours of X and X. So there's no guessing. And, uh, you know, the churches each have their mission from their congregation, which they want to carry out, which is fantastic. And right. we want to help them carry that out. But we need to be more responsible and more um, uh, manage the process right. a little better. 
See, that's what you see, ladies and gentlemen. Give Trump some cool round of applause because he gave us some of that good magic right there, ladies and gentlemen. And you made you made it through our first segment. Chris. I got I got I got to get me one of those clapping those uh, cheering. Oh, the cheering. Yeah, ones? the cheering things. I need one of those. Oh, I got you. Oh, yeah, man. You know, get splash a little bit. Hey, I need that. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it on my phone when I walk in my house. And it's gonna be like push it, and my kids are gonna be like, "What's going on? Where are you? Who's cheering? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But you know what, councilman, my brother, my frat brother. I yeah, gotta, I got to put you through the hot seat. All right. Are you ready for us, good sir? So, this segment, we provide depth questions to learn more about you as a guest. So, okay. these are going to be some questions. You got to be able to give it to us, all right? I'm a cancer. <laughs> I like wine. You like wine? <laughs> <laughs> Man, red or white? I like red. Red, okay. I'm a red person. He's a red yes. guy. Uh-huh. So, my first question for you is, who did you look up to growing up? You know, I was blessed. Uh, my first mentor and my first idol was my father. Salute to him. And, and six to the game. Yeah, you know, you know another great alpha man. Um, you know, he was a second black doctor, state of Nevada. Yep. And, 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 and he taught me about service and giving and building your community. Right. I always say this. And I used to work in his office. Right. And on Saturdays, he, he was another like, doctor's on open on Saturdays. He worked Monday through Saturday. It's only one and day. Yeah. One, Monday through Saturday. And, and so I used to work in his office and the charts were handwritten. And let's say Sean Torrey was a, was a, was a patient. On the chart, it would say, oh, it's $20. Okay, oh, 20. And then you would come out and you see my dad and my dad say, it's going to be $30 a day. I would write, you know, plus 30. So, O's 50. Then you would come in and say, well, you know, I only got 20 today. So, you give me 20. I'd say, minus 20, O's 30. Yeah. Like, I can, I personally did that thousands of times in my lifetime. And I always joke that if I could collect and all money my father was owed, I'd be a rich person. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be rich. Like, I used to be rich right now. You know, but he, you know, he 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 helped with Alpha founding. He did a lot of free. He did a lot of free physicals for the EOB for kids to go back to school to qualify for to play football for sports. Come on now, talk to you know, talk. He was a person that um, you know the, the house that I grew up in right. is the house I live in, and it was nothing for people to knock on the door and say, "Hey, is Doctor Crew here?" And then we'd say, um, "Yeah, hold on a second. And my dad would come back and he'd say, "Okay, you're not feeling well. Come on, come on in." And he see you had a bag at the house. He see you, Man. Um, and really the neighborhood. Yeah, doctor. I mean literally. And I'm not. I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying it. But it's like, true. I've, it's it's yeah. true. It happened all the time. And so when you see stuff like that, and anytime like his car broke down, he he used to carry these numbers on a piece of paper, and he would walk to a payphone and he call one of his patients, and they'd be like, "I gotta go." He call so and so. The plumbing went down. You go call Mr. Scott. You call so and so happy. You call so and so right, and they come up to the house, and you know. So I, I knew Mr. Scott. I knew Mr. Scott and all his kids because Mr. Scott would bring his kids over. So right. while he was fixing, we'd be playing with Mr. Scott's kids, yeah. and you know what I mean. And it was just, it was just that man. It was community. Everybody helped each other out. Um, people, people didn't judge. They loved you, yeah. and and they, and they helped you. And so, look. I always say this. I'm my father's son, yeah. right? And and I I have no I I have no underlying motive except to make our community an amazing community and a community that I know it to be. That's what you're supposed to do, and son. So, Let's go. Yeah. For your original question, your it was my father. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I and then I was introduced to so many other wonderful people via my father and my right. mother. My mother. Yeah. Look, man, my mother was close behind my father. My mother did not play. She had a philosophy. I'll turn this place out if you two boys, me and my brother, if you don't start acting right. <laughs> she did not care. She said that she could be at the mall. She, you could be at a restaurant. And she did not care. You acting up over there, she going to turn this place out. I mean, look, yeah, listen. somebody could have called 911 and they would have walked in and seen Barbara Creer. they be like, oh, oh Miss Creer, all right, no, no problem. You taking care of them <laughs> boys, huh? <laughs> okay, I got you. Whole different day. But, yeah, different uh, day. but but I was I was blessed to have two parents that were right there, and uh, they provided a lot of tough love. Correct, man, salute to the parents, man. Mm -hmm. And for the next question we have for you, what's one habit you do daily? One habit I do daily? One habit you do daily. <laughs> I wake up early, I drink a, I drink a cup of coffee, uh, that happens just, just every day. I make coffee, uh, <laughs> and uh, I used to take my kids to school. Now that they are out of school and they drive, yeah, they that drive was my thing. Says. I had a thing. Yeah. You know, I always wanted to be. No matter all the things I have going on, I wanted to drop my kids off at school and pick them up every day. And I schedule around that. 
And so now that they're older, um, I don't, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of like, oh, I don't think about Something that you miss, yeah. But I do. And you yeah. know what? When I was doing it, I knew that this would come to an end at some point. 16 years mm-hmm. or whatever. And I knew that I had a finite amount of time to, to do this. Right. And so um, I missed that. But one habit every single day I make, I get up and I make coffee. Make coffee? Yeah. Cool, uh-huh. cool. That's like a habit. It's like a thing. Man, I don't. I'm not a coffee guy like that. But when I do, I, I love my hazelnut latte. <laughs> well, four like, extra pumps. You like that sugar? It's what like you that. like. That's yeah, 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 yeah. You're not really drinking coffee. Nah, you say you right. drinking a sugar drink. But at this point, that's what that's what you, it is. You just feel it. You start drinking. You just feel the sugar just running just through run your through. running through your bones, you know, that's through that's your that. blood. You just <laughs> you just feel sweeter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next one for you is: What's a favorite tool you use that helps you run your business and helps you as a counselor? Well, um, one of the things that I, I really believe and I live off of this is that, you know, people don't do you wrong. They do you favors. Mm. Right. So when people are doing you wrong, they're they're doing you a favor. Right. The, the best thing is when someone can can show you who they are early on in a relationship. That's true. Right now. Now, how you accept that and what you do. Oh, well, you know, make excuse for whatever. Are you are you say, you know what? No, nope. you showed me who you are. And now I don't have to deal with you anymore. Right. And that allows you to free up your time, mm-hmm. your energies, your mind to not worry about that anymore and to move forward with other uh, people right. and other projects that are going to be more progressive. And so um, I, 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 I see that in folk. And if someone is not right, I say, you know, look, I just I just have the time to deal with it. It's only so much, I only have so much space in my head. I only have so much time to deal with things. And right. so. If I can do my best to eliminate the noise right. from the reality, mm-hmm. then I'm much better off. I'm much more productive. And so um, I just say people do you wrong. They don't do you wrong. They do you favors. Mm-hmm. You should just thank them. Yeah. I appreciate you being a complete total. Mm. <laughs> thank you. But now I can move on. Yes, exactly right. Now I can move on and start being productive, being productive. And uh, because, you know, you're a product of your environment. You want to hang out with people that aren't that aren't positive. And right. You, you don't need that. And, and no one does. Yeah. So, yeah. Nothing. Nothing good is going to come out of it. Cool. So what's the best part of working for yourself? Of uh, the time. The time. Yeah. The the ability to really schedule my time. I'm a firm believer. It's just I have so many moving parts in my life. Right. My schedule is one of the most important things that I do. Mm-hmm. It sounds sort of cliche. It sounds like really, that's what you're a big thing. But man, if it might, I always say, if it's on my calendar, I can do it. Right. Right. And so it's important to me to get, to have my time and, and my time to take care of my families. Like I said, you know, I can schedule myself to go pick up my kids. kids I can yeah. schedule myself to drop them off. Um, and so I, I do that. And I did my best to try not, to not let things hinder that. And right. if I, and so that's very important to me. Um, and, and honestly, that's going to probably be the name of this episode is time. time. That has sure. definitely been the theme of what I've heard for, and it makes, it makes sense. It's like, it's no time to waste. And, and, no if, time and, to waste. and it's one of those things where you really have to be effective and, and authentic and genuine about how you use your time. Yeah. Without so, a doubt. I mean, if you just look at the last couple of days of my life, you know, we, we, we took a kids, we took two bus loads of kids to Zion National Park. You know, we drove down. Oh, that's right. You we did drove back that. up. It was an amazing trip. Uh, the next day we that. woke up early. We dropped off 13 pallets of school supplies at 13 schools. You're talking that uh, talk. That, that, that happened. This morning we worked with Bolden Air Command for a uh, backpack giveaway. That we just did at a do little. They just got done. I'm here right now. I have another. You know, I have something else at three, and I have one more thing tonight. And last night, um, we had the West Las Vegas Art Center had their uh, 25th anniversary for the Performing Arts Performing Center, Arts Center yeah. and so they had an event last night. So you know, you just that's just that's just that's just my life, right? And I have to schedule it. Yeah. It's, you know, everything has to be a schedule. I got a schedule to get my hair cut. Man. I got a I got a schedule to you know go to the doctor. Yeah. It, if it's not on a calendar. My hair is not getting cut. cut. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? So is it fair to say that? Because the last question for this segment was, the, what, what's the worst part of working for yourself? Do you feel like this is... Well, the worst part of working for yourself is that, um, look, you roll the dice every single day. That's true. And if revenues come in this month, then great. 
revenues don't come in this month, then you got to figure it out. Yes. Right. Working for yourself is very, 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 very hard. Right. You know, people always look at the finish line of success. Mm-hmm. Right, they'll say, oh, "Well, look what Tory doing." I mean, you know, but people, it's true. We need to do a better job of embracing the journey. Man, I would okay? say yes. The journey is where is where the 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 guts of it is. Yeah, because everyone's got a journey. Yeah, right. You know, people look at the six finish line of success. Well, he built his business and he sold it for so and so. Right, but they don't say that. Like my buddy who is driving back and forth from from USC every weekend. Right. He had a he had one phone, he had a little closet, he started his business, and I said he sold it to Expedia. They'll look at what he sold it to Expedia, but they won't say he was driving back and forth every single exactly. weekend, answering the phone Man. and trying to make reservations, trying to trying to figure this out. Right. My brother, I mean he he started up managing music producers and one of his producers used to park his car at my brother's apartment because a repo guy was trying to right. repo <laughs> You know, take his car. <laughs> real right? talk to him. They don't like, talk about talk that. To me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it you know? And they, so they don't talk about that when they were sitting at Fat Burger, splitting a cheeseburger, talking about man, we need to get this song placed. Yeah. And then we need to get paid for it. Yeah. Right. But they'll look at it and say, man, your brother's managing Janet Jackson. Are your brother's managing Tony Braxton? Tony Braxton or the Backstreet Boys? We, but yeah, they don't. Yeah. But they don't look at the fact that. No, they don't. That journey. Yeah. I, that I, didn't I, come I, overnight. I, this has been 20 years in the making. Man, listen. And so I understand that. that is the, the the biggest challenge of a business is that it's hard. It's very, very hard. Getting clients is hard. Maintaining clients is hard. Um, getting new clients is hard. Managing people is hard. Right. And so it's not for everybody. Right. One of the things that I did learn when I started my own business. Right was the value of having a very good job mm-hmm. that paid you well, that had benefits. You get a paycheck every two weeks. Right. Uh, you get your retirement, you get your health benefits, you get, you know, all these things. Like, look, I used to take all that for granted. Yeah. Like, they need to give me this, man. I'm supposed to have health insurance. Right, right. I'm supposed to, you know, get my two weeks off, man. They're supposed to give me this. Until, yeah, yeah, until, right. you, until you became. Yeah, until it's time side. for me to give it to them. Man. Right, because you're like, well, yeah, you know, um, it's easy to say, yes, you're supposed to get paid, but if payroll is due on Thursday, mm-hmm. and let's say payroll is $1,000, and you got four fifty in the bank, yeah, <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> right, right. You're supposed to pay me. Yes, yeah. I am. The law says I'm supposed to pay you. Yes. You're absolutely right. So you either got to figure out a way to come up with that difference. That's true. You're going to borrow money from somebody to go make payroll, are you going to, you got a check coming in, you're gonna fund it, you're gonna, you know, you got a line of credit in the bank. Think about it, yeah. You gotta go figure it out. Cause payroll is due. Yeah, payroll's due. You gotta pay that. There's, yeah. You can't miss that. Yeah, you, you can't miss payroll. You can't, you know, there's no 30 day float. Nope. Payroll is due. Yep. Right, so it's hard. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. No, that's true. And I just, man, give me a round of applause. He's out here killing these segments, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Because now we, that don't mean you can't do it. Because he gave us all that, he gave us the recipe. Because now we got to go into that we don't sauce, got no ladies sauce, and gentlemen. You, you, you're lost. But you get lost in the sauce. But you also get lost in the sauce. <laughs> so in this segment, it gives us more insight of our guests on where we ask you, what is your special ingredient for your business? This is where you tell us why nobody can replicate what you do. So Councilman Quick, my brother, good frat brother, tell us what makes your business magnet. A business nobody can do. Well, it, it all comes down to relationships, right? Um, and relationships are vitally important in, in building a business and going that extra yard for clients and always giving them more than what they're expecting, right? right? And so, you know, you might pay me for this. You know, I give you an example. I'm going to design a logo for you. And it says, yeah, you know, we'll charge you X amount of dollars. We'll give you three samples of what that logo might look like. Right. But if you don't like them, then we keep on working with you. Right. right. Some people say, well, you know, you got to pick. Here goes your three. And call it a day. Yeah, that's, that's what people do. You yep. pick. And then if you don't like it, you go, well, OK, well, I mean, this is what we came up with. And you're going, but hold on. This isn't what I asked for. Right. This doesn't meet, you know, this doesn't meet the creative brief, as we call it. This doesn't meet. Uh, it's not me. Yeah. It's not my brand. It's not what I'm about. Until we continue to work with you. And right. we say, well, we usually we'll get all the information up front. You know, some people, you know, the difference too is is that um, we just don't do canned stuff. We right. aren't just gonna say, I'm looking for a logo. Okay, here goes a logo we did for, you know, for Smiths. How about this one? You want it to look like this? Yeah. You know, no. I mean, I need to find out what is about me. Like yes. what is going to feel for me. Right. And 
that is a big difference. And it's always amazing that people don't get that type of service when I hear about it or or they don't get, you know, there's, there's metrics that we use Mm -hmm. and people don't get reports and they don't tell you how how you're doing or you're not doing. It's amazing to me that they sit back and they're paying companies to do their marketing and advertising, but there's no reporting of it. Mm -hmm. You go, no, I haven't met with them in a couple months. And, and they, you know, I know we're doing this. I don't know how it's doing though. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. Yeah. Right. I know we have a digital campaign out there, but I, I'm not I don't I don't know how it's doing. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, when we will provide you, we'll go through with you. This is what's happening. This is what's working. This is our recommendation. This is boom, boom, boom. And so you'll know exactly where you stand and we where we're going and how we're growing. And and so that's a that's a huge difference. Communication is important. He, he gave us a lot of that little bit of mess recipe with his no sauce, ladies and gentlemen, because I could <laughs> thank you. I, I just lo- I love hearing your story every time we talk about what you've been through. Like, I just love talking about it because I think you have a story that people should really hear. Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. It is. And we're still on the journey. Uh, and, you know, I, I, we're just, you know, we're, I don't know what chapter we're on, but I guess I'm on chapter 52. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. You know, we're, 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 we're continuing to write the book. Some people don't make it past 20. Some people don't make it past 20. So I'm thankful for that. Cause you know, we're going to get ready to toast to that. Cause you know what time it is. <laughs> It's the last segment. It's happy hour, ladies and gentlemen. This segment right here is where we toast between the host and the guest, where you tell us something that's good, small or big. So is there anything going on that's great for you worth celebrating, the good sir? Uh, well, on the 13th of, uh, of August, I'll be celebrating my 27th wedding anniversary. So oh. uh, that, that is... Come on, man. That's as big as it gets. That's as big as it me. gets. I love it. So toast that to you, cheers. 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 Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> Nice. It's good. Man, it's an apple cider. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good old fashioned apple cider. Yes. So, Councilman Career, my good brother, my frat brother, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been a pleasure having you talking about this and opening up on this other side. Cause I, cause you know, for me, you my frat brother. Mm-hmm. You, you're, you're, you know, outside of just Councilman Career. Um, you're, you're a great friend, a great brother, a great big brother to me. Thank you. And so I just like the part of why I, would, I was so thankful that you accepted the show because I wanted them, you to talk about business. Yeah. And we, we always see counsel career. Yeah. They don't get to see this side. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. I, you know, all that, all that you're doing, the impact that you're making here at the College of Southern Nevada Thank on you. these students, on these kids, you know, you're. You, know, you get kids at a very pivotal time in their life yeah. and they need mentors like you and others that are here. And it's, it's important for them to see that they can do it also. Yes. I right? agree. People don't always have that opportunity to, to see folk who are doing, you know, positive things. Right. And so you are setting the example for somebody else and you're changing people's lives. Right. You, I say this. We're changing the course of the river. Yes. So the river is running east to west. Mm-hmm. We're going to dam it. We're going to stop it. And it start, it's going to run now from west to east. Man. Shifting that paradigm. Changing the course of the river. That paradigm. That shifting that paradigm is so vital. It is vital. It's so vital. So thank you. So you too. Thank you. No, it, it means a lot because it definitely... Um, I, I, there are students that I still talk to to this day that come by, that call. Of course. Say, and like... I just, it, it's weird to me because I was the, uh, it was me on the other side not that long ago. Sure. And to me, it's nothing. It's like, yo, this is what we're supposed to do. That's, that's just what we grew up with. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I wish that was a norm for a lot of other people. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But, you know, you keep on, I always say, you keep fighting a good fight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you keep on plugging and good things are happening. You know, you, you know, I've been a firm believer. I can't do everything for everybody, but I can do what I can. Yes. Amen. That's the true testament. You know what I mean? I agree. And so we just keep on doing what we can do and putting our best effort forward and good things will happen. Is there any way these people can find you? Just sure, I'm easy to find. You can always call my office, my city office, 702-229-5443. You can always email me at ccreer at lasvegasnevada.gov. Uh, if you're looking for business, you can always email me at ccreer at magnummark. Dot com. You can always check out our website, magnamark.com, or you can always go to my political site, which is cedriccareer.com. Thank you so much, Councilman Career Brother, fr- my good frat brother, Cedric Career, for being here today. This is the Business Information Buffet Podcast, where everybody eats the bib podcast with your host, Sean Tory and your DJ, DJ Ice Break. You go, boy. Thank you for tuning in with us, and we'll catch you next time. Ooh.